So after my last video educating you on Russian propaganda, this is your new response. As I stated that part of Russian propaganda is to emotionally overwhelm people, to make them forget about the side they've been committing for two years in Ukraine. And you said Gaza information is not being pushed, it's being suppressed. And it wouldn't happen if Joe didn't allow it, okay, or fund it. First of all, something I pointed out to you in the comments is that Joe Biden is not funding anything. In case you've forgotten, of the three branches of government, the executive branch does not fund anything. That comes from Congress. The House controls the purse strings. So if anyone wants to fund Israel or give them money or aid, that comes from the House, the Republican-led House, who tried passing a bill for $14 billion to give to Israel, and Biden said he would veto it because they took out all of the aid to the Palestinians. Again, that doesn't really speak to the actions of someone who doesn't give a shit about civilians and mass murder. Joe's not allowing any of it. He's been fighting back against Netanyahu, trying to make good on his original pledge to help him defend themselves, while also constantly telling him to lay off civilian casualties. This is now in the public realm. You can find it on many different sites. You can read about how Biden has been condemning the operations in southern Gaza. You can read about Joe Biden publicly making a statement that Israel is losing support globally and they need to change their tactics, where he said that Netanyahu and the far-right people in his government are impeding a solution. You can read where Biden and Secretary Blinken both told Netanyahu that they are not going to be occupying the Gaza Strip, which is one of the ultimate goals of Netanyahu. Biden wants Gaza and the West Bank to be reunited under a Palestinian authority. Biden has not only been attempting to protect civilians, but he has also been against pushing them out of their own land into places like Egypt, which is a war crime and members of the GOP like Nikki Haley and Donald Trump have fully supported. Despite what you're being told about Biden just allowing Netanyahu to do whatever he wants, totally does not fit any of the facts. That being said, when someone in the comments section asked you for a source on this, you actually gave one. And it was from Human Rights Watch, so I took a look at the article. First of all, this entire article is about Meta and Facebook. It has absolutely nothing to do with TikTok. They said that a lot of Meta's regulation of content is done by AI. Which is funny, because so is TikTok's. And they claim that Meta has been inappropriately removing a whole bunch of content regarding Palestine. They go into why Meta removed it, and what Meta did to remove it, but they do not go into at all what that content was. And that is important. Let's just mention also that whether it be TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, anything, their method of determining violations and regulations is entirely fucked. We know that. Especially since they took people out of the picture. But there are many cases that the content really does matter. Because they said in hundreds of cases documented, Meta invoked its Dangerous Organizations and Individuals policy, which fully incorporates the United States designated list of terrorist organizations. Which means that a lot of this content was most likely removed for violent acts shown by Hamas. Which, holy shit, TikTok doesn't even do half the time. And there's a double-edged sword to trying to regulate content like this. Because ever since the 2016 election, when Facebook was the main thing being used by the Russians in order to spread disinformation and sow seeds of doubt amongst the populace, Facebook has gone through constant measures to try to re-up their ability to combat misinformation. And a lot of the information about the Palestinian conflict is misinformation. I spoke the other day about how we keep seeing footage of bombs being dropped, only to find out later that it was a falsely labeled video and it was a video of a different country from six months earlier. They tried doing that shit during the Afghanistan pullout. A whole bunch of videos showed up online and it turned out that those were from years ago. It is very easy to post fake or misleading videos and articles online and misattribute them. Facebook has been trying to crack down on that, but they are flawed as fuck and Zuckerberg's a moron. So while Meta did indeed fuck up here, it shows that they're trying to sift through the thousands of pieces of information coming into their platform and trying to get rid of the stuff that might be propaganda or garbage. And when you switch your entire system over to AI, that's problematic on the best of days. I'm looking at you, TikTok. Because one of the things I would like to finally mention here is that exactly the opposite happens here on TikTok. How many times do you go to somebody's video on Palestine and it's always somebody going, All right, everybody, please help me out and reshare this because this is getting suppressed. Meanwhile, you immediately look at the stats on that video and it's got three and a half million views and 400,000 likes. Every single time. I've actually done studies of this in my spare time. Every single time I make a video 
with sources debunking somebody's misinformation about what's happening over in Gaza and Israel, that video tops out at 400 views every single time. I have adequate sources, I back up everything that I say, and I even sometimes switch up my hashtags. But the AI analyzes your words too. However, every single time I run across a video of somebody either advocating that we should all vote third party, even if we lose, or a video claiming that Joe Biden is funding mass murder, those videos are always the ones where somebody is saying it's being suppressed, but it has millions of fucking views. And that, as I've stated before, is because ever since Putin showed up after October 7th and started his disinformation campaign online, Russia took its army of micro-influencers and moved them from talking about Ukraine and started using them to talk about Gaza. A study that I saw by the International Center for Counterterrorism stated that after October 7th, Russia's micro-influencers on Facebook went from 14,000 posts about Ukraine to 44,000 posts about Gaza. Tell me that Russian disinformation doesn't exist. And according to this previous Politico article, the sole purpose of that propaganda is to get people to stop caring about and forget about the mass murder that's been going on in Ukraine for almost two years, and to get people who are likely Democrat voters to fight amongst themselves. Because this war in the Middle East is Russia's best chance at Donald Trump getting reelected. If you think you're too smart to fall for Russian propaganda, you already did.